Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show. I am your host, John Hine, 888-STERN-100, 888-783-7610. That's the number for you to call and join in on the phone as we talk all about today's Howard Stern program. Howard in the middle of a very long day. And uh, we heard all about it. Joining me today as my co-host, well, of course, there's Gary Delabate who's going to come in later, but I'm joined by a musician who is a diehard super fan. Very happy to have him here. Dave Haas, welcome to the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show. Hey, John. How you doing, man? Doing okay. I'm glad you made it up here. And Me too. I have the ultimate respect for you because I know when you're out on the road... Sometimes you know, with uh, other bands or whatever, the, you know, you're driving around in the van, and you've got Howard 100 and Howard 100 on there, and you're, uh, you know, preaching, and uh, it's much appreciated on our end. Oh yeah, of course, man. It's uh, it's what often keeps me sane on tour is uh, is knowing I've got a Howard Stern show and wrap up show to look forward to the next morning. Now, do you know? force other acts to listen to the show as you're traveling? Uh, typically, it it just works by osmosis. Like you know, we'll come in laughing about a bit or something, you know, at load in or, or sound check. And, uh, inevitably they're like, what are you guys talking about? I'm like, Oh, you don't listen to Howard Stern. And then oftentimes the people, you know, that are either opening or headlining the tour end up fans, you know? Yeah. A lot of times we find out that people bond, like they'll hear, like they'll know oh, you're a Howard fan. I'm a Howard fan too. And all of a sudden everything is great. You know, yeah, absolutely. It changes what you think of them. That's not what they look like. <laughs> now, now you're buddies because, you can bond over Howard. It's true. Yeah. I mean, there's so even I mean, that happens also with guests. You guys will have certain musicians on that we might I might find to be. Oh, I don't know about them. And then they come on and they're super fans and it's instant respect. Very cool. Well, glad to have Dave Haas here. He's going to help us all throughout this show. A lot of different things to get to. Al. Let's bring everybody up to date. Here's what you need to know from the Howard Stern Show. Jeff the Drunk got on Periscope. Called me up yesterday all yelling at me. Going, Why would you mention this was a hoax with the items? <laughs> Why would I believe that they come me? You're a fucking idiot. Fuck you up. Neil Patrick Harris. If you can dress <laughs> Nicole <laughs> Scherzinger and watch her change, would you be a guest announcer? Well, listen, Maybe. You don't want me as a guest Dude, announcer. I'm you a would fucking be, miserable asshole. I can get you out of there by 9.05 in the car. You think you were bad on the That's side of that movie? Yes. No, no, I know. I, please. Come on, don't, you'd be fucking I, amazing. I love you, but don't ask me to do that. Well, but well, let me ask you a question. Let me. I have one for you. All right, go ahead. Do you ever think that with so many fans against you that you are a turnoff? No. Well, you know what it means? Yeah, because you can't please all the fans. But a lot of it comes down to jealousy, and I get it. Uh, Marianne from Brooklyn. Howard, listen. Tomorrow's the finale from 9 to 11. They changed the time for America's Got Talent. I wanted everyone to Wait, know Wait, what that. is that? 9 to 11? <laughs> Yes. When? Tomorrow's not. Oh. Tomorrow's the finale. Fuck you didn't even no. know that. Are you shitting me? And that's what you need to know from the Howard Stern Show. And you could just hear the air go out of Howard when he realized what Marianne said, that, oh, my God, he's got to go to 11 o'clock. But, Howard, there is a light at the end of this tunnel. It's tonight. It's tomorrow. I'm sure you'll do a great job. And then AGT is no more in terms of Howard Stern being a judge there. And I think... I think the time has come. I think he did a great job. I think he enjoyed it. I think he made his mark as a good judge. And now he's ready to get that time in his life back to do whatever he's going to do. Dave, does it surprise you that it's time to go? No, it doesn't surprise me. I think one of the one of the coolest things about him being a judge is it's sort of legitimized him to a to the mainstream mm. audience and people that ordinarily may not come on the show for, for interviews and stuff are now to do so i mean i think that it definitely pushed him further into that terry gross or barbara walters kind of interviewer seat you know which is really cool and then but i also think like it's kind of run its course love the fresh air comparison nice there (laughs) terry gross and i agree with you i think that it happened with i think the movie as well when private parts came out a lot of people thought it was going to be oh the shock and all this nudity and who knows what it's going to be it ends up being a sweet love letter and, and a very funny funny movie i think with agt a lot of people who didn't listen to Howard sort of didn't know what to expect. And then he came on and took the job really seriously. And he actually does care about which acts get through. And whether you like the show or not, I mean, you have to respect the fact that he did a solid job as a judge. But now the time has come to move on. And so I guess, you know, this will be the last few hours he'll be dealing with it. And then he'll be back to us, which is good news and bad news. I mean, we get more Howard, of course, but the bad news is 
he can now focus more on, <laughs> on busting all of our balls. We yeah. always have to be aware of that. Now, at the start of the show, there was a very interesting conversation that he, uh, Fred, Gary, and even Robin chimed in on. And Rasan, I believe our poll has something to do with that today. Yes, we ask the, uh, the hard questions here on the wrap-up show. We take the poll very serious. You heard the discussion this morning about who would you bang pretty much uh, between Howard and the crew. So the choices are pretty terrible. You have Kim Davis, who's the Kentucky County clerk who won't marry gay people. She's hot. Joyce Mitchell, I think they called her Shaw Skank. She's uh, the woman who helped uh, the two prisoners escape from Clinton. And then you have Caitlyn Jenner. So out of those three choices, if you had to, who would you rather sleep with? And this is an anonymous poll, so be honest. If you like a little dick, you know, it's okay. You can vote for Caitlyn. Don't, don't be shy. And when Gary gets in here, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you or something. Okay. But when Gary gets in here, I will definitely follow up on his, oh, if I was on a desert island, I'd bang Caitlin, because I was there for that conversation as well. <laughs> and I can vouch for the fact that Gary absolutely said that. And, uh, but we'll let him defend himself, and then we'll all jump on him. But anyway, Rasan, if people want to vote, where should they go? They should go to the Howard Stern Show Facebook page, leave a comment. Uh, you can catch your vote there. You can also find the poll online on Twitter at Stern Show. All right. Well, we heard how Fred voted, how Howard voted, and how Gary voted. So I'll turn the tables on you, Rasan. Yeah. I know, you know you're know you up for anything. So, I'm down for whatever. So A, B, or C, who are you going for? Um, I'm probably going to take Joyce Mitchell. I, I don't, I'm not into dudes, so Caitlyn Jenner's not getting it. Now, you mean Shaw Skank. Shaw that's Skank. How I'm sorry, Shaw her. Skank. Okay. Shaw Skank. And why the Shaw Skank? Uh, I don't, I'm not into dudes, so... Caitlyn Jenner's not getting it. Mm -hmm. Kim Davis is just a bigot, so I can't get down with that. So that only leaves one other choice. Well, if Kim Davis was a better-looking bigot, would you be able to put your politics aside probably, and go for her? I could probably put my morals aside and, and do it. Yeah. All right. So Rasan's Rassan, in the Shaw Skank. Dave, you're here you know, to answer the tough questions. you got to pick one. Who's it going to be? Well, I think um, the most feminine-looking one of the three is Caitlyn. Yes. <laughs> And so I might have to side with Baba Booey. Oh, man. I also feel that if you're going to, um, you know, if I had to make this choice, it would elevate my profile much more to have sex with Caitlin than it would to um, that is true. either of the other two. I think they'll be gone out of the public eye pretty quickly. So the penis wouldn't bother you? You'd work your oh, way it, it would. it would bother me. Mm -hmm. but uh, Just move that to the side. I think, uh, you know, you're talking about, a, a really difficult decision. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But, uh, All right, so Dave Haw is making the tough call with uh, Caitlin. Who yeah, are you banging? For the Shaw Skank? Oh, I'm going to vote. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no-brainer to me. It's the Shaw Skank, and Got I'll tell to. you why. She, regardless of the way she looks, she showed such tremendous initiative with these two prisoners that you have to figure she'll do, you know, she'll, she'll go the extra mile for you, and I you think know. that's what we're looking for here. Uh, again, it's, you know, the, it's not a wonderful choice, but that's who my vote would be for. Now, I hope we didn't influence the poll. We'll see how the audience feels. And also a follow up with Gary when he gets in here about his feelings for Caitlyn Jenner and how Dave Hawes agrees with him. But let's take a break. I see your calls. When we come back, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about Ringo's big auction. We'll talk about the coffee taste off. But we also got to talk about NPH, Neil Patrick Harris dropping by. And if you're a fan of this show, did Neil make a big mistake when he was in there with Howard? Great appearance, but did he ask him a question he shouldn't have asked? We'll get to that and more. Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show, live on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Hey, this is Neil, hey, this is Neil Patrick Harris, and you're listening to The Wrap-Up Show with John Hine and Gary Delabate. Welcome back to the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show, 888-STERN-100, 888-783-7610. I'm John Hine, joined by Gary Delabate. Hello, hello. Dave Hawes is here with us. Howdy. And Rasan, who can't wait to bang the Shaw Skank. Yes. And we're talking all things Howard, and that music can only mean one thing. It's Doogie Howser, MD. But Neil Patrick Harris, who talked about being Doogie for a long time and sort of coming to grips with it, but now he's certainly broken free of that and had a successful sitcom. And tonight he's got a premiere of his new show right after AGT. And Gary, the thing with Neil is he's experiencing a day of Howard Stern's life for the first time, really. Getting up early, doing the show, and then late at night, you got to do it all over again. Yeah, but it's not even really a day of Howard Stern's life because he gets to sleep late tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, Howard's got two jobs. Neil's got one job that just takes the whole day. Howard's got two jobs that take this whole morning and then the rest of the day. So in a way, Howard's doing more. But yes, I understand what you're saying. 
he, he's understanding what it's like to put in a lot of work. And Neil's excited. He's very gung-ho about the show. And Neil has proven over time that he is a huge super fan of the Howard Stern show. We know that. But he, to, oh, sorry, you go. But, but today, Gary, and I know what Neil wanted, and I, I don't blame him for going for it, but if you listen to the show, and Dave Hawes, I'm sure you'll attest to this, there's stuff you just don't ask Howard to do, and I think asking him to be the announcer on his show although it's all in good fun, I'm sure he really wants it to happen, might not have been the smartest thing on Neil's part. Well, I want to start by saying Neil is one of my favorite guests. He is just, he's just great. I love the way he speaks when he's on the air. I like when he talks about, like, I was jerking off, and I like when he says, you know, watch fucking NBC tonight. He just talks like a person. He's, he's very, a great guy. He's very conversational. I don't feel like he's guarded, you know? And, um, but I, I did say to John, it's always amazing to me, somebody who knows the show so well and then does something that makes you think they don't know the show that well. Yeah, I thought I know, the same thing. I know he listens every day, but it, this is like almost like when you heard Greg Fitzsimmons asking for his uh, um, forward, forward, forward to the book. Yeah. Like, you, you're like, oh, gosh. I, I wouldn't even I... ask to, to like have him listen to one of my songs because I know, <laughs> you know there's just certain things. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to come in and do this, but I'm not going to bother Howard with stuff because I do listen every day and I know what his attitude is. But, but do so, you think, and, and again, this isn't to not Neil as a guest or as a person. I think he's great. I'm not saying that. I just think he might have made a mistake asking Howard. But I wonder if the person thinks, whether it's Greg or Neil or anybody who's done it, yeah, it's me. And sure. so Howard, <laughs> you know, he, he'll do it. Because Howard does feel guilty about this kind of stuff. And sometimes it gets the best of him. And Howard also has an amazing way of making you feel like you're the special one in his life. When you sit in that chair, and Neil Patrick Harris is a good example because he's been here a couple of times, but even with a guy like Greg Fitzsimmons, when you sit in that chair, Howard's he's totally attentive to you. Yep. He's the best. He's like the best. He looks right. He looks you right in the eye. He's interested in everything you have to say. So I think you start to feel like you have a bond with him. And it's not like Howard's a phony. You do it. Howard does have a bond with you. It's just that he has a bond with a lot of people every day. When you wrote your book, and I know Fitzsimmons went through the whole thing, but how difficult of a decision was it for you not to ask Howard to do anything? It was not a difficult decision at all. It was discussed early on that it was unnecessary. In fact, I, I was at the same book company as Artie, and I think my editor said, like, Artie already did that. We, it doesn't make sense to do it again. So you, I, didn't, we, I never even thought about asking. Do you think it curried favor? Like, do you think he, he looked highly upon your decision not to ask him? I don't know, because at the end, I still got shit because Howard got shit for not writing my forward, even right. though I never asked him to do it. Right. People were like, well, you wrote Artie's forward, and Greg Fitzsimmons asked you, but you didn't do Gary's. And Howard took a lot of shit, but I never asked. Right. Yeah, right. you're in a no-win situation there. You know that going in. Right. Uh, but that's the what? That's the uh, price of being Bible I, Bowie. It's the wages of being Bible Bowie. Wages, I, I put Howard in a bad position just by writing the book. Yes, <laughs> yes. Stephen White playing. You're on the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show. Steve, um, just before I get to my point about the interview, I wanted to say that I, out of all three of those girls, I'd probably take down the, uh, the girl who worked in the prison, surely because of the fact that she's probably the best in bed, although she's definitely the ugliest. Um, but that's my, my vote when it comes to that. Wait, wait, before you make uh, your Neil comment, you, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up again, because I voted for her as well, because basically the same reasoning. She's going to do the most. But, Gary, you emphatically denied mm -hmm. this Caitlyn Jenner thing. And I, I, think, I, I was there when you made the comment. I'm we, sure I must have been joking. For, I didn't think you were joking. And others didn't think they were joking. You, if they want to come on and say so, I, they can. I mean, I would admit to it. I, I genuinely don't remember saying it. Maybe I did. I, I, in my mind, I think I was probably joking. I, at the end of the day, I'm not going to fuck a dude. Okay. So now presented with the choice, who would you choose of the three? Uh, well, I made it very clear. It's Shawshank. It's to me, it's no contest. As crazy as it sounds, I think Shawshank's slightly better looking than the other one. And the other one, I just I can't even look at. But you thought Caitlyn looked great on that cover. She looked good for a. She's the best looking dude I've ever seen. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead, Steve. What do you want to say? <laughs> yeah. So with regard to the interview, I think when somebody asks Howard to do something for them, I think it's a pretty much a foregone conclusion that the answer is no. So I don't really think that Neil did anything out of bounds by asking Howard, because I think in the back of his mind, he knows that he's been asked for stuff in the past, and the, the answer is no. I mean, so, so what's, the point I, of a, what's the point of asking, then, if you know the answer is no? I mean, maybe there's a long shot. I mean, obviously it happened once before with uh, the Fitzsimmons book, but, I mean, 
you know, at the end of the day, I think most people know when they come on the show and ask Howard for something, the answer is pretty much going to be no. Well, so, it's, I mean, it's, that... it's mostly no, but not always no. Yeah. Because I was thinking of the other one that, that just reminded me was that um, Howard did something for George Takei's movie. I can't, whether they, he let the yeah. uh, let them come in and shoot, so it's not always no, but it's mostly no. So I think Steve's saying basically he expected a no. Neil expected a no, but why not take the shot? Is that fair? Exactly, that's what I think. So I don't really think there was any you know any damage done in terms of, and I, I mean damage might be the wrong word, but I don't I don't think he was out of line by asking Howard because I I feel as though. You know, nine times out of ten, the answer is going to be no to that. And I feel like the guest knows that coming on. So, just my point. All right, good point, Steve. Thank you for calling in. Let's see what Jim in Denver thinks. Jim, you're on the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show with John, Gary, and Dave Hawes. Hey, guys. I think that how Neil asked demonstrates how much of a fan of the show he is because he, he addressed what he felt Howard's concerns were by saying, hey, I'll have you there at 745. I will have you out of there at 9.05. Okay, can I stop you for a second? That's When yeah. he said, I'll have you out of there by 9.05, he should already know better. <laughs> 9.05 is way too fucking late. When he said, if he said, I can have you out of there by 8.05, that I'm buying into, 9.05 mm. is ridiculous for Howard. I think it showed that he is, how big of a fan he is, though. Yeah, he should have thrown in that uh, Howard gets to sleep in the next day. But I, I don't think there's anything wrong, and I don't think he uh, there's any love lost from Howard to him. And I wouldn't be surprised if Howard does it. Uh, maybe not week three, but um, he may do it down the road. Now, I don't think Howard's going to carry any resentment because he asked, but I do think that Neil, as I said before, should have known better. But as the caller said, maybe he did know better and just take the shot. Uh, Danielle in Massachusetts, what do you think of all this? Hi, I think that Howard did the same thing with Paul McCartney, you know, a few years ago when both well, McCartney saying he didn't want to take pictures, but then Howard saw him and asked for a picture, and McCartney said no. And then, you know, Howard was really pissed off about it. Well, wait a second, hold on. Him. I, I, I'm going to ask you a question on that one. Paul never said he didn't want to take pictures. Howard just asked What's him. It? I, I don't think Paul said in advance, I'm not taking any pictures. Right. He, I thought he said he didn't love taking pictures with fans when he was out. I don't think I... I, I don't thought it was just circumstantial. It was like... Yeah, autograph. It was, it was autograph. Along those lines. And yeah. then Howard asked for what Paul McCartney specifically said he didn't want to do. Oh, you're referring and to he, when he asked for the autograph yeah. with his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, yes, I don't yes, think yes, Paul yes. specifically said he didn't want to sign an autograph. That's why... That's why and, and the only thing I would say in defense of Howard on that is you're standing right there to sign an autograph. You didn't say to Paul McCartney, could you come and meet me at NBC <laughs> at 745 and I'll have you out by 905 and sign this autograph. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. Uh, the other thing before we go to break I want to talk about with Neil was how he made his kids. Because I thought Howard proposed a very interesting scenario. And Gary, you jumped all over it in terms of finding the right surrogate for you and how entertaining it could be to watch a game show like that. I told Howard as soon as he said that on the air, the light bulb went off in my head. I would totally watch a game show. So I watch those shows on, uh, on those channels uh, where they sell houses all the time, where they're always flipping houses. Right. And it's the same format every day. They, they show you three houses, and you pick one. I would, do, I would watch a show where somebody met three surrogates that they you know, had narrowed down, and then they went through the whole interview process, and then at the end, you watch them pick that person live on television. How awesome would that be? It's You're not asking trip. anybody to do something that they wouldn't do anyway. And it sounded like you know, Neil and, and his husband gave a lot of thought to who was going to be the quote-unquote mother of their child, and as a result, these kids sounds like they're turning out great. Who so. did they pick? Um, they don't know who it somebody was, smart but and so, somebody. Well, so you just judge on criteria. Then. Well, they, they said they actually he was able. They, not only were they able to look at pictures of the woman through her stages of her life, uh -huh. but they were able to send her questions, specific questions from them that she answered. They don't know her last name, but they were able to get a lot of information and also looked at family history and things like that, wow. and then make the judgment that way. So uh, yeah, good for those guys, and good luck to Neil tonight. Of course, everyone should tune in after AGT to check out Best Time Ever with Neil Patrick Harris. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue the Best Time Ever with Dave Haas as we talk about everyone being on Periscope and how everyone feels about that, plus Wendy, the slow adult, checking in at the end of the show, Howard trying to decide what coffee he wants to drink, and lots more, including our poll. Go vote on Facebook and Twitter. It's the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Whatever. Really? <laughs> Pretty awesome. Howard Stern does the best interviews. Your guests are legends. The world of Howard Stern never stops. I'm very, very proud of it. Ooh. Howard 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Howard 101. <laughs>
Hi, this is Matt Besser. You're listening to the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show with John Hine and Baba Booey. Welcome back to the Howard Stern Wrap-Up Show. 888-STERN-100 is the number to call. John, Gary, musician Dave House, and Rasan all here talking all things Howard. Still time to vote on our poll. Who would you like to bang? The Shaw Skank, Kim Davis, or Caitlyn Jenner. Head on over to Facebook or Twitter, and Rasan will read the results by the time we finish here. But uh, we've got a musician in the house, so I should ask about this Ringo Starr auction that's happening. And Gary, uh, Howard talked a while about the different stuff that Ringo has available. Wonder if he has, you know, enough money, which I think he does. But some of those things that he's selling, I don't think Howard would understand why people would spend a lot of money on them. Yeah, Howard does. First of all, Howard, I don't think has ever asked for an autograph in his life, except for from Paul McCartney, <laughs> which he didn't get. <laughs> which he didn't get, and that wasn't for him, right? And so he doesn't understand that whole thing, and he thinks that that stuff is stupid, and that's fine. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, somebody's going to pay a lot of money for this stuff. I was telling Howard, I remember watching a special on after Princess Diana died, like a year later, they auctioned off a bunch of her dresses, and they went for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I saw a woman who didn't have a lot of money. She took out the equivalent of a mortgage, she took out a loan, like a two hundred seventy-five thousand oh dollars loan God. to buy one of the dresses. And for her, she said it was worth it. She's going to pay it off over 30 years and, you know, just to have a piece of history. I would actually like to go back and find that piece and see what that dress is worth. Now, I don't know if it's gone up mm. or gone down, but like we were talking about our buddy Vinny, you know, Vinny, who was actually in studio when Ringo was on years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, Vinny Favalli, who was answering questions for Ringo as they were right. asked to him. If Vinny, <laughs> if Vinny did, wasn't spending a lot of money on this play, right? Don't you think that he... The, I'm trying to think of which one of the things he got. There was something that Howard said today. It wasn't the drum set. The, what the else guitar? Was, no, it wasn't the guitar. It was... The Mercedes that George Harrison... No, not the Mercedes. It was, it, was, it was maybe something that was written... Oh, I know what it was. I know exactly what it was. This Vinny would totally pay a ridiculous amount of money for this. White Album, number one. The yes. first pressing of the White Album. Oh, oh Ringo has that for sale? Yeah. Which has been locked up in a vault for years. See, Dave, you, Dave, even you perked up. You're like, hmm, how much is that? Hey, man, I'm a fan of pieces of vinyl. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. so what do you think, Dave? I mean, do you understand why people would go for this kind of thing and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars? Yeah, on this I think with the Beatles, it's a, it's a, you know, the Beatles are the Stones. It, it's kind of, I mean, they've affected pop culture in such a significant way that all that memorabilia will probably go on to it'll, it'll stay worth something. Yeah, I think if you're a fan of it and you have the means, I sort of get it. But a lot, a lot of times, like you were saying, Gary, people are mortgaging their houses to get stuff like this. And I always had this issue with baseball cards because, like, I collected baseball cards as a kid. But I never got them because I thought they were a great investment. I just like baseball right. cards. I was into it. When people look at this, I think they look at it from both sides as an investment versus being a fan. And I guess the ultimate is when you get both. Right. But in and this I, case, I, who knows if that's what's going to happen. I think you would get both. I, let's put it this way. I don't think if Vinny bought Beatles White Album number one, I think he would spend the rest of his life showing it off to anybody who came in the house. And I don't think it's going to go down in value before he dies. Yeah. So then, so that's, that's what's better than that. Yeah. I think a lot of these things in this auction are going to go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is he giving the money to charity or something? Uh, well, a, a portion. portion. A portion. Whatever. An undisclosed portion. Can we discuss that for a minute too? Like, like Howard thinks that Ringo could be broke. And it's anybody, could, anybody could be broke. I mean, Michael Jackson was broke at yeah, one time. exactly. But, you know, we were looking at it today and Howard said, okay, he didn't, we were doing the math in the back office. Okay, he didn't write most of the songs, but he wrote some songs for the Beatles. And doesn't you can answer this question for me. If you write a song, okay, that's a publishing royalty. Mm -hmm. But isn't there an artist royalty anytime a record is sold that an artist gets? Well, I mean, it depends on the deal they sign, but I would assume having written songs on records with McCartney and Lennon that continually sell. Okay, but he's only got a handful of those. But performance, a performance, isn't there an artist performance royalty? No. When records sell? No, it's all, all the stuff that comes to you. As far as I've been told, it's, it's the songwriting that gets you the money. So if, if, if the Beatles have sold 300 million records, it means that, Paul hasn't seen, uh, that Ringo hasn't seen a dime of that? Well, no, he has because he's written songs on, on each of those records. But if he hadn't? If he hadn't, there's a good chance that all of his money came from... From, you know, merchandising and those kinds of things. It's, made, it's a bizarre business. See, I always thought that there was a performance royalty. Like when the there when, when the music gets played, when the Beatles record gets played, does Ringo make any money for that? Not I don't sold, think so. But well, it gets played on the radio. Well, also, they don't own the catalog anymore, right? But that's the publishing catalog. That's not the performances. Oh, I see. I don't think you get paid for for the performance, which is a it's a drag. They should change that. Maybe he's broke. 
So Howard was, <laughs> I'll segue into Bobo here. Uh, Howard was talking to Bobo, and Bobo was trying to contemplate why the audience doesn't like him. And even Howard is now contemplating because after the Bobo free summer, Bobo calls in, and I guess, you know, the calls are what they are. And Howard is, is wondering, and Bobo is wondering too, you know, where all this hate is coming from. I got an idea, by the way, where it's coming from. Okay. If Eric were still alive, would Bobo be getting as much shit? I feel like there's like hate to be distributed, and Eric used to get a lot of it. So now when, it doesn't know where to go. So when we lost Eric, right, that we, ball of hate we shifted need, over. That's right. We need a villain. Bobo. Yeah, and a little bit of Jeff the Drunk too. To right. be fair, you agree, got, Dave? Yeah, I think that's probably a good a good theory. I mean, Eric was a way better caller though. I mean, he just had there was so much more going but on. But he was all, he also was more polarizing. In a lot it's of true. Ways. Yeah, it's true. The, the, the ones who loved him loved him, and the ones who hated him fucking hated him. It's true. Yeah, I, that's probably what it is. I mean, Bobo, Bobo is not my favorite caller though. <laughs> See why? I, again, I, I've never had anybody come into wrap up and say, you know what? I like Bobo as a caller. I think I mean we defend them all the time. And oh, and, so you guys like him? Well, Howard wouldn't pick up his calls if he didn't contribute to the show, right? Right. So well, that's true. I mean, I like how Howard deals with them i mean that's certainly what the entertainment is for me but a lot of times people sitting in your chair will say you know what i really don't like bobo all that much. i think it's annoying that he isn't off the cuff that he's writing his own like i mean he's like pre-writing the, the questions now for some so, reason that i'm that aggravates me. what about marianne from brooklyn because some people get put off by her oh she's terrific <laughs> what's the difference i just think she has a charisma and a passion for the show that that so you know i mean it's uh She's more genuine, I think, as part yeah, of what you She's saying. like the inner voice of the fan in me. You know, <laughs> if you could look inside my head and, and see how I feel about Howard Stern, that's what it would probably sound like. With Mary. <laughs> and, and Bobo's thinking, well, all I do is love the show and I have a shrine to the show. And what am I doing wrong here? Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I guess he also has a more annoying sounding voice. I think that probably doesn't do him any favors. I think you might be right. I, think the, I think the thing that hurts him the most, I, I don't mind that his questions are for the most part contrived because howard can you know can work with that that's yeah. it gives it. i think the thing that that uh puts people off the most is that his um sort of sense of entitlement that because right. i've done it for so long you know like in other words people i think do a, you you're hitting onto it it's people, entitlement yeah people do a job for 20 years and they're just mediocre at it but that doesn't mean that they should be applauded but the, and i'm not saying that bubble is or isn't good but in his mind I've been doing this the longest. I deserve the accolade. Right. And Marianne never approaches it that way. She's just happy to get any air. And it's funny because Marianne is sort of the queen of AGT and has gotten a lot from the show. Yeah. Yet you never sense that sense of entitlement that Bobo might carry. She's never once thrown it in Howard's face. That She's never said, Howard, I've attended every AGT and I took all the whack breakers. You know it because we discuss it. Right. But she doesn't throw it at you. She's right. very graceful. I think there's a big difference there. Lee in Florida, you're on the Howard Stern wrap-up show. Hi, Lee. Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I'm just calling to say that the Beatles definitely get a performance royalty. Most artists get a performance royalty. Uh, the Beatles have a 25% deal um, for the master. So when you, like, when you buy a CD for 16 bucks, there's a, there's a cost incurred in all that in making the CD and the music and what you pay. Mm -hmm. So if it costs $10 for like Best Buy to buy a CD and then they sell it for what they sell it for, out of that $10, you take into account all the publishing royalties, what the manufacturing is to actually make the record, and the Beatles get 25% of that cost. So they get, what is that, uh, 250 a CD sold, which then would get split four ways between the four of them. Is this the lawyer for the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> See, no, no, and that, well, no I'm, I'm sorry, I work in the business. Um, no, so you so you don't think no. uh, now again we don't know how Ringo and Barbara spend their money but you don't think Ringo is hard up for cash here right? Well, he shouldn't be because if you look at Abbey Road, which sells like crazy, so you figured he's getting you know a, a buck or seventy five cents a record plus nine cents for Octopus's Garden for publishing. Well, you know, he's got other songs so, so right. He, he's got his whole solo. Hi, I'm just, uh, he wrote I'm it. Don't come out. easy. Yeah, but, he, he, but, he, but he's selling a lot more Abbey Road than he is solo records at this if, point. If, right. I was saying if they get a penny each every time one of those songs is played somewhere, he right. should have a shitload of money. Yeah. So uh, thank think. you, Lee, for, for clarifying there. And uh, yeah, I guess Ringo's okay, but clearly he's – maybe as Gary, you – I think we were talking about this. You're like, you know what? He's getting up there. He looks – he's got all this stuff. What's he going to do with right. it? That why, seems why not like a more share it with – 
Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm more of the, the belief, like, why do I need six houses? I'm too fucking tired. The one in England seems perfectly fine. The one in England, the one in L.A. would be plenty. I don't, Monte Carlo was awesome when I was younger. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just like a regular person getting older. And, and knowing I, other people will enjoy it more than he. Like, he probably doesn't even look at half of that stuff. Yeah, and I've got White Album number one sitting in a vault. Let Vinny Favalli pay a few hundred grand and he can have it. And everybody's happy, <laughs> right? Thank you for uh, calling in there, Lee. Rasan, yep. it is your time to shine. The question was put out there. Howard, Fred, Robin, and Gary answered it on the show. We were answering it here on the wrap-up show. Of the three, who did the audience choose to bang? Was it the Shaw Skank? Was it Kim Davis? Or was it Caitlyn Jenner? Yeah, uh, before I get to the results, we actually got some pretty com- pretty funny comments on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Brian says, if this was an F, Mary kill, I would F, Shaw Skank, marry Caitlyn, and kill myself. <laughs> and then uh, Jason also says, if these are my only choices, I'll bang Baba Booey. So. I'm not up for sale. <laughs> Uh, the, the results. Uh, amazingly, more people decided to bang Caitlyn Jenner than Kim Davis. Kim Davis came in third with 21%. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner got 33%. And then Shaw Skank with 45%. Yeah. Wow. And, and somebody said, somebody, we had a phone call, but we didn't take it. Somebody said, like, if you saw uh, the Matt Lauer interview, Shaw Skank had a, a cold sore, not slowing me down. Not at all. <laughs> I, I just, I, it's what it's got to be. It's my punishment. Thank you, Rasan. On Sternthology, Stuttering John attempts to correctly identify beer in a blind taste testing. We'll hear the full Bernie Sanders interview from 2005, plus a call from current Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. All that and more, 5 o'clock Eastern on Howard 101. Dave Hawes, to get more information, go to DaveHawes.com. That's H-A-U-S-E. Or you can follow him on Twitter at Hawes Dave. Dave, anything else you want to plug? No, just I wanted to shout out my friend Brendan Hill for turning me on to the uh, Stern Show when I was in middle school, uh, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. Philly? Philly area? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, in Christian school, and I had a Sony Walkman, and he was like, turn it to this dial in the morning, and you'll have your mind blown. It's like sex on the radio. (laughs) Yeah, we've been fans ever since. Nice. Brendan Hill, thank you for that. Gary, got anything? I'm good. David Crosby's hosting a special for us, playing tracks from his concert at the Troubadour in L.A., including a 20-minute version of Deja Vu. That's Friday night and all through the weekend on Howard 101. We'll be back with another live Howard Stern wrap-up show just for you tomorrow on Howard 100 and Howard 101.